In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a color wheel. Welcome back to my Starwood show. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to colors and just give you a fundamental knowledge about different colors and their relationships. A color wheel is a tool that artists use to identify colors and their relationship to each other. Uh, it's pretty much a mixing guide. You can actually purchase them from art stores. They come in these packages. This is a pocket size and uh, it gives you the kind of basic knowledge that you need about colors and you can just uh, rotate it and play around with it and it shows you uh, kind of what are the rules for mixing paint. It definitely doesn't contain all the colors that exist in the world uh, but uh, it can definitely help you to find out and figure out how to mix your colors. But for the purpose of this video, what I have in mind with this exercise is that to get you uh, physically and mentally prepared uh, to start a painting and uh, learning how to identify different colors as you mix them and also learn how to apply different colors. Let's get started and I will explain more. So what I have here is a 100 pound sheet using acrylic paint so I'm using something that is relatively heavier. Then what I have here I drew a circle in the middle of my sheet and as you see I have two other circles inside it, one medium one and one smaller one and what I have done is that I have divided the circle into relatively three equal parts and I'm going to paint each part with one of the primary colors. So the primary colors are yellow, red and blue. Primary colors are the colors that cannot be mixed. They are pure colors. But even though primary colors cannot be mixed, they also have different types because colors also have um, temperature. So they can be cool or warm tones. Cool tone for yellow, for example, I'm doing it right now, is Hansa. And the warmer tone, which is kind of like I'm lemon yellow. And there's also cadmium yellow, which is a little bit warmer and it's more of closer to, let's say, mustard. And uh, when it comes to red tones, uh, there's also, you know, we have cadmium red and crimson red. Cadmium red is more of a tomato or blood red color. And crimson is more like strawberry, raspberry, cranberry, that kind of color, all, all the berries I guess. Those are more cool tones for the reds. And for blues we have the ultramarine blue as well as phyla blue. This one is something that I find interesting. Uh, some people say the ultramarine is the warmer tone and phyla blue is a cooler tone. I find it's opposite. I, I feel the ultramarine is more cooler than thylo, but generally colors that have yellows and reds inside them, they are considered to be warm tones, warmer colors, and colors that have more blue in them, like blues and purples, are considered to be cool colors. So I finished one part one-third of my circle and I'm going to paint the other the other one-third of my circle with my cadmium red it doesn't matter which side you do because it's a wheel it's a circle so it will all be connected some point anyway.
You don't need too much paint for this exercise. Do not pour too much paint out. If you need more, you can always get more paint, but uh, try to use your materials wisely. Do not waste too much. That's why I'm just getting a tiny bit and mix it slightly with water. And don't worry if you go over the line. That's fine. Just try to follow the guidelines as much as possible. So your knowledge of colors are going to be very handy if, particularly for this exercise, if you're planning to uh, paint um, a painting, whether it's going to be a portrait or a landscape or you're going to do a master copy. Uh, sometimes if you're not very good at drawing things, if you are good at identifying colors and just um, knowing how to read colors and knowing what color needs to be mixed with what color to create that color that you see, you can just apply that color and uh, forget about finding out what that line is there and how to draw that form and shape that it's, it's kind of confusing for you so it can save a lot of time for you that will you know that way as well and um, you can just apply the paint and I'm going to apply my ultramarine blue to the last third your knowledge of colors can also be a very handy skill. If you're not too much into painting, you can still use it to enhance your sense of fashion. If you're not into the fashion, you can use it for you know, when it comes the time for home renovations or changing the interior design and the house decor. And if you're not into that, I guess what well, well, for cooking, it also can be very helpful if you know what colors of vegetables to mix with the others. And if you're not even into that, I guess you, my friend, need to add some color into your life. So generally what we need for this exercise here, we all we just need only the primary colors and the neutral colors. Primary colors being red, yellow, and blue, and neutral colors being black and white. We pretty much don't even need black either, but I'm going to include it anyway just to show the mixing with black and how it can change the colors. But you should be able to start and finish any painting pretty much with just these colors, the primary colors. I apologize if the lighting is not very well. I'm doing my best here. I hope that uh, you will see the colors as clearly as possible. So now that we have um, completed all three parts with our primary colors, um, what I'm going to do is uh, start doing a very uh, smooth transition between one color to another. Now I'm going to actually use my cadmium yellow when we are mixing red with yellow we get our orange you see like this and well cadmium yellow is relatively it's slightly darker uh, than the Hansa yellow you see so we got orange here and what I'm going to do now is to bring in some of that cadmium red into my yellow so as you start applying the paint you realize the transparency of your medium meaning if you can see through it or not if it's opaque it will it will cover everything and you won't be able to see what color was underneath it. You see? So this is what is happening. So what I'm going to do, I want to, I'm going to show you this again. As you see, we are having a very smooth transition from yellow to 
orange and then to red and then darker red and then it goes into purple and blues and so on so what I'm going to do now is making sure that I keep a sliver of my yellow just yellow so just take your time with this and play around with it if it makes it easier for you you can draw all the lines for the secondary colors which are the colors that we mix as a result of uh, immediate mixing of primary colors okay and then anything that is going towards my blue is going to be a little bit darker so I'm going to include my crimson red you see how different this is You can see that when you mix red and blue, you will be getting a purple. But it's also good to know that mixing which red with which blue, what purple it gives you. So here's some of my crimson red that I have. ultramarine below. See we get a very deep deep purple. I'm going to apply it right here. So in terms of knowing how much of which color is going to make a difference. Of course, if you add more blue, it's going to make it darker because blue is generally a darker color. And if you add more of red, it's going to be uh, a purple that is more inclined towards red. And then now I'm going to do one sliver of just Silo blue. Keep it like that. I keep one sliver just ultramarine blue as it was. I'll probably go over it later again. But here I'm going to start my greens. So if we mix yellow with blue, we shall get green. I'm going to add now more yellow. You can just use the same colors. You just add more yellow to it. So if it was one dab of yellow and one dab of blue, now we have two dabs of yellow. Another purpose of this exercise is that for you to just learn how to work with the layers. As you see, I'm layering all the colors on top of each other. And I have painted my entire circle right at the beginning and there was no white paper showing through. This is how you can improve your painting as well if you just work in layers. It also adds a lot of depth to your work. In reality, if we were going to compare colors to the musical notes, there is only half a tone between each musical note to the other. But between each two colors, there are about 160 different shades, like different colors that you can get. Between black and white, there are about 200 different shades. Something that you can find in this book that I read actually, Art and Visual perception the psychology of the creative eye so that's very interesting 
it, I will probably make a separate video about just shading alone by itself. I let this dry a little bit and then I will show you what I mean by those 200 or like 160 different shades between each color. We're like, okay, well, we're done. No, we're not. Now we're going to actually start adding white or black to each color and um, create those colors and apply it to our color well. All right, so now that our circle is slightly drier, what I'm going to do is to actually start applying the neutral colors to each color that we made. So I have white on my uh, brush. So the outer circle that I have drawn uh, before starting uh, the work was because of this, because I'm going to start applying white to each color and start adding it into my outer circle and the inner circle will be having those same colors but with black so you see if you add white to cadmium red you get pink where was my cadmium red right here maybe i can start applying it right here and then as I'm going towards the more crimson red, I can just start applying crimson red. If you add more white, of course, you're getting even lighter tones of pink. So if you want to even make this more challenging, you can start by like darker tones being closer and then as it goes outward you can add increase your white a little bit even more and make it lighter so you can see the difference now I'm going to start adding yellow to that same pink that I had because we're transitioning right So this is getting slightly close to the skin tones. When I get close to the pure yellow, I'm just going to add yellow with white. Okay, and then as I'm getting closer to my greens, I'm going to start adding my blue. Which blue am I going to use? So if you are going to add thyla blue you're going to get more of these uh, turquoise blue with yellow and white if you start adding ultramarine blue you'll get more of um, sky blue So try to make it as smooth as possible. Now I'm going to start adding even more blue. Okay, and less of my yellow. Okay, and now that we're getting closer to the purples, I'm going to start adding my red to it. As we're getting closer to the reds again, I'm adding more red. You can always, always fix anything that you are messing up here. Don't worry about it. You can always go over it. Let it dry and you can go over it and it will be fine. All right, so you've got the idea. What I'm going to do now is to doing the same thing but with black. Now technically, we should be able to mix black by just mixing the primary colors in very specific amounts. It was actually one of our assignments at, at art school. So if we would mix uh, blue with red and yellow, we should be able to achieve black 
but I'm not going to do this for this uh, video I, I'm going to just use black but if you don't have black that's completely fine you can just play around with the amount of blue that you're going to use and that should do it so what I'm going to do is just a trick that I'm going to use I'm going to apply the black very very thin coat like just uh, with some water and going over the colors in my circle the inner circle that I have here because it's going to be slightly transparent and it will just work as a filter like as if you have just put on a filter on top of it and then I can actually mix my colors with it too if I need to fix it Some blue. I'm just going to, if you mix some blue with black, it's going to give you some more darker tones and blue navy, that kind of color. And then if you add a little bit of black to the orange, it gives you some sort of a brown. And if you mix red, with your black you will have burgundy and I need to let it dry and then go over it properly so to get all the colors properly but that's the idea pretty much This is how it's supposed to turn out. This is one that we made here right now. And this is how So here for example it shows if you would mix black with this red violet color, it's going to give you this color. If you would mix violet or the purple with white, this is the color that you should be getting. So pretty much this is what it has underneath it. And we just made this for ourselves here as a very good exercise to get you into the painting mode and mixing and applying paint and working in layers and knowing what mixture of colors gives you what. So I think that's all I wanted to share with you in this video. Um, if you have more time, please just take your time and uh, mix as many colors as you want. Just uh, changing the amount of white or black and uh, see how many different colors that are actually your most favorite colors that you can mix and learn. If you don't have time to make, you know, this color wheel or even practicing this kind of exercise, uh, you can still practice your knowledge of colors by just going around and identifying different colors and see if you can um, identify what colors have been mixed together to make this color. Also, if you make the color wheel, feel free to share it with me. I would love to see what you have done. And I will explain more about uh, different colors in my future videos and give more knowledge about them. This was just a very basic, basic fundamental one. Other than that, thank you very much for your attention.